At the beginning of the pandemic, we were very worried that this virus would be a particular threat for patients with immune diseases, with cirrhosis, following liver transplantation. And for some, it actually was. Now that we have had the vaccinations and that many patients have experienced the disease, this risk is much, much smaller. If you have an advanced liver disease, if you have advanced cirrhosis, if you have been transplanted, it's particularly important that you be vaccinated and more than that, that you receive a booster vaccination at least once. Whether you need the adapted vaccines when they come up in the autumn, we don't have the data quite yet, but probably it makes sense to wait for these adapted new vaccines that will be more effective against the new mutants than the old vaccines. While we have very good data for two vaccinations and pretty good data for a booster vaccination, we have very limited data on a fourth or even further vaccination. So we don't really know. We don't have controlled trials where one group got a fourth vaccination, the other one didn't, as a comparable group. Therefore, it is difficult to give definite advice. The general recommendation for rare liver disease patients would be, yes, have a booster, have a third vaccination, make an individual decision on a fourth vaccination and discuss with your doctor whether you should wait for the new adapted vaccines. For a fifth vaccination, we have no data and probably we should be careful about not giving too many vaccinations. It's really more important that you get your yearly shot against flu. We are very lucky that these vaccines are really well tolerated. We have the different vaccines and all of them are surprisingly well tolerated. I know that the media were full of side effects, but a few patients with side effects with millions and millions that got the vaccine. So these are very safe vaccines and there is no absolute contraindication unless you are allergic to a component of the vaccine and there's always an alternative vaccine that you could then use. We have seen, and actually we originally expected, that this virus has mutations, and the mutations then made the virus more infectious. This is simple evolutionary biology. The more infectious a virus is, the more it has an advantage to spread. And if it causes immunity, the spread will lead to protection against the viruses that spread more slowly. So what we've been seeing is exactly what virologists expected. The virus becomes more infectious, spreads more quickly. And in order to be more infected, it's better to only cause mild disease because a patient with mild disease will jump on the bus, will go to a party, will meet friends and infect others. The patient with severe disease on a ventilator in an intensive care unit may infect a nurse, but the nurse knows how to protect herself. So that virus doesn't have a good chance to spread. And that is the evolutionary reason why we are expecting this not to become much worse. No, we will not get rid of COVID. It will eventually become like many other flu infections, more like a common cold. For the coming years, probably more severe than a common cold, but certainly milder in most patients, much milder than, for example, an influenza infection. Because of this immunity and because this virus, despite its mutations, it's not as variable as the influenza virus. But the virus is everywhere. It's also in the animal kingdom. We know that cats and dogs are infected with the virus. So the virus will not go away.